Greetings, it's Mr. Howard, your favorite math teacher. Some of my students have teased me about opening all of my videos with the same greeting of hello, this is Mr. Howard, so I thought I would mix it up a little bit for this one. All right, in this video, it's really the second part of our first look at polynomials for pre-calculus. And in this video, we're going to look at uh, identifying uh, single roots, double roots, and triple roots, and also the end behavior of polynomials, and then actually being able to sketch a graph after we've identified that information. So let's look at um, this information that we have uh, in front of us here, uh, some additional polynomial facts. So the graphs of polynomials are smooth, they have no sharp corners, and they are continuous so they have no gaps or holes. So polynomials uh, can have a lot of different shapes, but they'll always be smooth. There are no sharp corners, for example. Okay, that's uh, a wild uh, looking shape here. But what I mean when I draw this graph is that it is continuous and it doesn't have any sharp edges. So we have nice rounded uh, corners here. There are no sharp edges like that, for example. All right, the domain, as this implies, is from negative infinity, so to negative infinity in the x direction there, and to positive infinity in the x direction there. All right, the end behavior, that is the graph to the far left and right, is the same as for a power function of the same degree as the polynomial. So in our the previous unit for my pre-calculus students, we looked at power functions, and we identified that uh, powers of 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, all even powers, had the same end behavior, and powers of 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, etc., all odd powers, excluding 1, had the same uh, end behavior. So uh, end behavior in this case would be this part right here, and this part right here. That is the end behavior of this function. So a quick review, if we have an x cubed or x to the fifth or x to the seventh, etc., we had um, this behavior. So we had end behavior like that where we were um, down and left and up and right. So that was a positive um, one of these. A negative one of these, three, a power of 3, 5, and 7, had this in behavior like this. So it was up and to the left and down and to the right. Okay, so that was for powers of 3, 5, 7, 9, etc. If we had uh, an x squared draw these down here, an x squared, or x to the fourth, or x to the sixth, like that, or eight or ten, any even power. We had, uh, if we had a positive, it was like this. We had in behavior like this. So up and to the left, up and to the right. Those, that's where our end behavior occurs. What goes on in between here and in between here, that's not what we're talking about. We're only talking about at the very end. So all of these parts are our end behavior. I'm going to go ahead so we keep this straight. I'm going to have a plus here. So if, if you're, uh, you have a positive x cubed, positive x to the fifth, x to the seventh, it's like the green one. And if you have need to do that in red. If you have a negative x to the third, fifth, seventh, etc., this end behavior is uh, what you can expect, okay? And then same thing over here. If we have a, a negative x squared, x to the fourth, x to the sixth, it's down like this. All right, and we will see what goes on in between the end behavior can vary, but the end behavior you can always predict based on what degree you have. So that's that's what we're talking about. So here's our in behavior here. Let's put a plus over here. So when we say in behavior, that's what we're talking about. What happens all the way to the right on the graph and all the way to the left on the graph. So as x approaches positive infinity and as x approaches negative infinity. All right, so next bullet point here. For a polynomial of degree n, there are at most 
in unique roots. So in other words, if we have a polynomial that is x to the fourth, so it's a fourth degree polynomial, it can have at most four unique roots. Okay? x to the fifth, five unique roots at most. x squared, two unique, unique roots at most. All right, that's what we're saying uh, there. Uh, a single root is where a graph crosses the x-axis. So let's draw a couple of examples here. So a single, single root is where we cross the x-axis. So uh, it could look like this, like this, like this. Each one of these is a single root. Okay, so technically this one has one, two, three single roots. So right there, right there, and right there. I'm going to use another color so we can see that better. So there's a root, there's a root, there's a root. So three single roots. So I'm going to write three single roots here. Okay. Uh, a double root. So let's draw what a double root would look like. So double. Draw an axis here. And a double root could be like this. Okay, a double root, uh, by definition, it says a double root is a graph. The graph is tangent to the x-axis. F does not change signs. So F is positive here. We come down, we have a double root right here. So we're setting on the x-axis, and then we continue in the positive y direction. So the uh, our f function here did not change sign. It was positive here, 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 and still positive here. It never went negative. So that's a double root right there. All right. And we're going to label this uh, positive uh, double root. So we have uh, where we're opening upward like this. If we, we could also have a double root that was coming from the bottom. So for example, like this. So if we had something like that, that would be also be a, a double root. And that would be one, we, we can describe this as a bump because it's bumping on the um, x-axis like this. It, it still has this same definition. It's coming up. It's tangent to the x-axis and our f of x function never changed signs. It was negative, had a ne negative y values here. It comes up, it bumps the x-axis uh, so it's equal to zero, a y value of zero right here and then it continues in the negative direction. It never changes back to positive. All right. So that would be what I call a, a bump and this is what I call a sit. So I'm going to change this. I don't want to confuse you. Uh, I'm meaning that this opens upward uh, when I said that, but I, I don't want to confuse you, so I'm going to change that. So uh, we'll refer to this as a sit double, and this one is a bump double. All right, this one bumps into the x-axis from the bottom. This one sits on the x-axis from the top. All right. And then lastly, we have the uh, triple root. I'll put it over here. We're running out of room. So a triple, triple has this going on. It's like a cubic graph. Okay. The the triple root is like the parent function x cubed. Uh, I'm gonna move this over so we can see it a little better. So I'm going to exaggerate it a little bit so we can see it well. So this root right here is a triple root. Okay, Anytime you have a power of 3, that's going to be a triple root. And that is just like a cubic function where you have, by definition here, a graph crosses the x-axis. So it changes sign. F changes sign. It's negative y values here. It crosses, and now it's positive. And the root is a point of inflection. So that means that it's concavity changes. So if we really zoom in on this, I want this to be clear. Um, if we really zoomed in, uh, it would look 
like this. So we are talking about, it's not as zoomed in as I would like, but we're talking about right here where it's crossing and we are changing. So we right in through here, we are concave down, okay? Concave down right here. And here we are concave up, all right? So that is what we mean by a change in concavity. It's concave down and it changes to concave up. All right, so you could still have one that does this, and you have a, draw the axis in here, you could have a, a triple root right here, all right, where you're concave up here, and now you're concave down here, so it's just a change in concavity occurs when you have a triple root, all right, so those are the, um, different types of root all, all roots all of these are triple roots in this case this is a single root this example that we drew had three single roots we had the uh, double root you could have a bump double root where we bump up against the x-axis or you could have a sit double root uh, some people may call these different things but uh, just for my students so that we can talk about uh, the different types um, that's why I'm using this terminology here all right, so let's. Uh, I'm going to call that good um, for this part, and then we're going to make another part where we actually work uh, several examples and actually a couple from uh, what will be homework for my students. All right, so I will see you in the next video.